Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. It's raining really heavily where I am, the sky is basically falling to pieces, so that's why I'm in this weird type of light that you see me in. So anyway, uh, you saw the title to this video and you're probably thinking, Jorge, I thought you were a cat person. Cat person, dog person, those are labels and I don't really like labels. I have a pile of books, uh, books to be read right there, and there's a Japanese bestseller about a cat in that pile of books. So just for the sake of objectivity, I decided to read a Japanese bestseller about a dog. And that's what I have for you today. I have Seishu Hase's Shonen to Inu, The Boy and the Dog. This book was published originally in 2020, but it was just recently, a few months ago, translated into English. It took me about a week to read it, maybe six days, but it was a particularly busy and difficult week. So I'm guessing that a faster reader or even a normal reader could probably get through it in about a few hours, uh, maybe within the day. Uh, I really envy the people who can do that, right? I am, um, you know, very slow reader and, and I always ask myself, should I do something about that? Like, should I try to become a faster reader? But then I believe there is something to be said about slow reading. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I think there's actually a book uh, devoted to the concept of slow reading. So all in all, I would say that I am pretty happy with uh, who I am. I, I don't have very high standards. That's the that's the key to to that. So I read this book, The Boy and the Dog. I really enjoyed it, and I want to share my ideas on it with you. Let me tell you a little bit about the author first. Uh, this book was written by Seishu Hase, who was born in Hokkaido in 1965, and he is known as an author of bestsellers. Primarily, the type of fiction that he works with is the yakuza type of fiction and much of his work has actually been adapted to film. Now, if you read The Boy and the Dog, you're going to realize that there are uh, some elements, right? There, there's a very slight element of crime fiction there. But I would say that for the most part, this is not the type of book that Seishu Hase is primarily known for. Interesting thing about The Boy and the Dog, this book won the Naoki Prize. This is a prize that has been awarded since the year 1935 to popular novels written by relatively young or relatively new authors. I had to look up the Naoki Prize because I was not familiar with it. And one really nice thing that I found out doing that is that one of the winners of the Naoki Prize is Akiyuki Nosaka for his work Grave of the Fireflies. Yes, it is based on that unforgettable film from Studio Ghibli. So that was one of the books that uh, won this award. And then of course we have uh, Natsuo Kirino. Her, uh, her novel Out is pretty famous, it was pretty well known, it was a bestseller. She did not win the Naoki Prize for that novel in particular, but she has also been uh, you know, a laureate or a recipient of the uh, Naoki Prize. So just to give you a little bit of information about that. Let's look at the structure of this book, right? Basically what we have is a collection of six stories that are pretty much independent but that are tied together by the presence of Tamon, the dog of the title. I would say that you can read these stories independently and each one of them actually gives you a sense of conclusion but at the same time it leaves you thinking about what might have happened to some of the characters involved. That is really the, my, my favorite type of short story. Right? The short story that gives you some closure, but at the same time gives you something to hold on to and something to remember, you know, and something to think about. In terms of the length, right, each story is, I would say the six stories are pretty much equal in length. You're looking at 50 to 55 pages to the story. So, you know, it's, it's a, good, a good length, right, I would say, for, for a short story. And because of the structure, you know, I was thinking, okay, we have an animal, right, that connects all of these stories. The first thing that came to my mind was Robert Poisson's film, O Azar Baltasar, right? The one about the donkey and all the people that you meet through this donkey as he goes through his life's um, journey. So um, that is the first thing that came to mind. But I also thought about, and this has a lot to do with my background, right? I thought about Spanish literature believe it or not, in particular the picaresque novel, which is a typically Spanish 
uh, genre really with the Lazarillo de Tormes, right? It grows right back to that work. In that case, the character is not an animal, right? We're talking about a human being, but it's a very similar concept, right? You have one character through whom you meet all these other characters and you encounter all of these other stories. So it's a similar structure to that. Let me tell you a little bit about the stories that you can find here, right? The first one is titled The Man and the Dog. And this one is about a driver, okay, uh, who is involved in some shady business. Basically what he does is he drives criminals away from the crime scene. And he has a mother, okay, who is suffering from dementia. And then their sister is taking care of their uh, mother. So it is at that point that the dog Tamon comes into their lives. This is a really sad, but it is also a very endearing story. So it, it is quite memorable, okay? It's one of those stories that you're going to remember from, from this collection of stories slash novel. And you're going to see the main idea of the book right away from this story. And that is basically that dogs help us to cope, okay? Then we have The Thief and the Dog. That is the second story here. And it continues the first story in many ways, right? Um, and this one, what I like about this one in particular is the structure, because you have the story of the thief and how he continues with his life now that he has the dog, but he's also thinking about his past, right? He is thinking about the, the circumstances that led him to his present situation. He used to have a dog too. There was a dog in his life. That is the case of many of the characters that you will find here. So in a sense, the dog reminds them of a previous dog that uh, they, they encountered in their life. And for this story, I would say The Thief and the Dog, the main theme is the vicious cycle of poverty and crime, right? Because we have at the center the character of a thief. Before we had the driver, okay, who was involved in this shady business. Now we have this thief. Now, interestingly, in uh, the first part of this story, right, we find out something that happened to a character from the previous story. I wish there had been more of that in the book. There is not a lot of that, but it happens in this story. At the same time, uh, if you think about it, if there is a lot of that, you might start to think, okay, what a coincidence, right? So I think it's a good balance that Hase achieves when it comes to tying the stories together, because that can seem contrived uh, if, if it is pushed uh, too much, right? So I thought it was a very nice touch that we find out what happened to, to one of the previous characters in this story right here. After that, we have the couple and the dog, okay? This one begins with Tamon saving a guy who is obsessed with outdoors activities from a possible bear attack. So you see uh, you see Tamon as a savior in, in this case, right? So this guy who is obsessed with the outdoors has a wife who is very artistic. She uh, sells um, vegetables and also her handiwork online. And she's just very industrious, you know? But then uh, he, uh, the husband, he's just not, you know, he's a bit of a slacker, right? He, he is interested in doing a lot of things and he actually has a store that he opens whenever he feels like it. He is very, you know, not very serious about the hours of operation, we could say that. But you can see that the, the marriage is a little bit troubled, right? I would describe this story as the portrait of a tepid young adult marriage. They're in their 40s, just to give you an idea of what kind of age range we are talking about here with the couple and the dog. So uh, an effective way of showing, in this case, the disconnect between the husband and the wife, and I thought this was a very nice touch too, is the fact that they both give the dog different names. So it's a really nice way of saying indirectly, you know, look how these people are disconnected in a way. So basically through the dog we learn what happens to this couple and how their story uh, develops, right? Uh, then we have the fourth story which is the prostitute and the dog. And in this one the girl of the title finds Tamon in a mountain road. I really liked the structure here too because all that we know is that she's there in that mountain road and that she comes across this dog. She basically runs into him. But it is later in the story that we find out what it was that she was doing there in that mountain road in the first place. So there's a little bit of a revelation right there and that, that I believe is like great storytelling. So I would say because of that structure and, and because of the themes also, this was one of my favorite stories really in the novel. So like previous characters, the girl of this story is reminded of a dog that she had before. 
So as I said before, you know, that is a common uh, theme. It's a recurring theme in the, in the novel. And what Tamon does, as always, you know, is that he provides solace. In, in this case, it's temporary solace, and in may, maybe some of the other cases it might be too. But it is that moment, you know, that moment where you have the company of this dog, and for a while at least, everything is fine. Then we have the fifth uh, part, or the fifth section, is titled The Old Man and the Dog. This one was very good too. It's about a hunter who has just become a widower, okay? Uh, his wife also had a dog, so that's once again the, the dog connection right there. And he has a daughter, and even a granddaughter, but they're not on speaking terms. So we have another uh, lonely person, another person who is kind of isolated, you could say, from society. I cannot really tell you much about the story without ruining it, without ruining it, you know, so I, I'm just gonna tell you this. I will say that uh, something that I really love about this one is the fact that there is a parallel story. Okay, some of my favorite stories, short stories, novellas, one of the reasons why I like them is because there are many things happening at once and most of the time you have two threads, right? There's a, let's say, a, a close-up story, right? A, a major story and then a background story. So uh, that's the kind of thing that I like and that happens in this one. So you have the story of the hunter slash widower and in the background there is this story about a bear who is terrorizing the village. So I thought that was very well done. And I would say that uh, it is one of my favorite also from uh, this novel, if we're looking at the individual stories, right? Beyond the, the general plot of the boy and the dog. And the last one, the last part that we have is actually titled The Boy and the Dog. So it bears the title of the collection, right? This one deals with a kid who has experienced a tsunami and he is in shock. One of the things about the premise of this novel is this. The novel begins with the idea that there has just been a triple disaster. There has been a tsunami, earthquake, and nuclear meltdown. And that is why this dog has become lost, and he's trying to become reunited with his original owner. So at that point, when this kid is suffering from shock, right, Tamon comes into his and his parents' life, and just uh, he transforms these characters, right? Uh, once again, I cannot tell you a lot about this one in particular because it is the last story in the book, so I don't want to ruin the experience of reading for you. But I think it's it's just a beautiful conclusion to the entire novel, you know? Uh, and that final chapter, that final chapter, it's, it's half a page long. Okay, do not read it. Do not read it before you get to the end. I absolutely loved it, okay? I think it's uh, it was a very nice touch and it gave me that feeling. You know when you close a book and you're like, wow, you know, that was a reading experience, you know, I enjoyed it, you know, so that is the kind of thing that I got from The Boy and the Dog, thanks to that um, final chapter. So I wanted to share some ideas with you about the themes that you will find in this book, and also just the general worldview that Hase presents to us, right? Obviously, uh, by the very premise of the book, the main idea here is the concept of the journey, okay? So the dog travels, and you have a little map that you you can see here at the beginning uh, he goes from Kamaishi to Kumamoto okay that is roughly I, I did the math right and, and by the way the journey takes five years we know about that but that is roughly 1069 miles so it is quite a journey it is really the journey of a lifetime right um, by the time that you are halfway through the book right you're gonna realize and you're gonna think these stories are pretty sad, right? They're, they're quite tragic, okay? And what I wanted to say about this book is that, in a way, it is a Buddhist book. What do I mean by that, right? What do I mean when I call this a Buddhist story? Well, uh, you will recall the first noble truth of the Buddha, which is that life is suffering, right? That is the first noble truth. Uh, I believe that the author would add something to that. He would say, uh, yes, life is suffering, but dogs can help us to cope and they can give us relief. Let me read you a very short passage that basically is the, the theme of the book or, or maybe the, the main idea behind it, right? And this is it, you'll find it on page 236. Uh, it says, Yaichi was well aware that dogs had a special relationship to humans. Maybe it was God who sent them, or maybe Buddha. Who knew? But he knew that they had been dispatched for the benefit of our foolish species. They understood the human heart and were attuned to it in a way no other creature 
was. So I would say that is the main idea of the boy and the dog if we're looking for it, that central theme right there. Uh, there's a lot of violence, there are a lot of accidents that happen, right? Illness is also a recurring theme in the story. And you can also remember here the Buddha's story, right? Remember when he encountered the ill person, the old person, right? And then the corpse. So we come back to that idea of these things that uh, basically, you know, are part of the human condition. This is the human condition the way it is, you know? So you could say maybe that the author's perspective is a little bit dark, okay? But the dogs are here to help us. And by extension, we could say maybe any pets. Though I will say, it, I will say this, you know, as a cat person, even uh, if we take this story, right? And if you change the character of the dog to a cat, I am not sure that it would work, okay? Uh, I admit that. We would have a different story. You could have a completely different story with a cat, but in this case, it just has to be a dog, right? So one objection that some readers might raise, right, when they read this novel is that it seems that all the characters here, all the characters that Tamon meets, are going through rather extreme situations, right? So one question that some readers might have is, Aren't there just any, you know, ordinary people in ordinary situations around? Why, why is that not the case? Well, there are two things that we have to consider here. The first point is that um, this is a bestseller, okay? So uh, we have to remember that. And when I say bestseller in this case, I, that is not an adjective. It's a genre for me, okay? Ordinary people in ordinary situations they're wonderful, but they just do not make for, for good bestsellers, you know, so we have to uh, keep that in mind. And the other point that I wanted to mention has to do with the story itself. This would be a possible answer to as to why, you know, uh, Tamon only meets people who are going through these extreme situations. Tamon, okay, the name is derived from Tamonten, which means uh, guardian deity, right? So we have guardian deity on, on one side. And then in one of the first, uh, actually in the first story, at one point he is called Mamorigami, which means guardian angel, or also a guardian type of being, right? So I think, you know, um, even at one point, if I remember correctly, there is one of the characters who suggests that maybe the dog, Tamon, and one of the characters might have met in a previous life. So you see what we have here, we could say, we could argue that the dog knows where to go, that he knows where he is needed the most. So in that sense, he is a kind of guardian angel because he seeks out those people who need his help the most. So maybe that is an explanation for that uh, idea that could seem a little bit contrived or maybe too much of a coincidence. We could think maybe the dog is uh, looking for these people, right? So that is something that we can uh, ba basically use as an answer to that objection if we want to look at it that way. So uh, the bottom line, this novel is a bit harsh, it is a bit sad, but it is all in all a very endearing text and, and a story that you will uh, remember. It is realistic, okay? I would describe it as realistic. What do I mean by that? Well, the novel is uplifting, okay? So you have one of those uplifting novels, but at the same time, it is believable, you know? There are novels that are uplifting and you're like, okay, it seems that you're just trying to make me feel good, which is good, you know? I, I do read stuff like that every now and then, and it has its purpose, and it, it does good sometimes, and, and I could say it's even necessary. But sometimes you want some kind of a realistic story, and this story will provide that, I believe. Dogs have been known to go on very long journeys, so if that is an objection, that has happened in, in real life, you know. Uh, the style, okay, what, what kind of style do you find here? You will find the type of style that you find in a bestseller, okay? Uh, think something like A Man Called Ova, you know, uh, that is the typical style of a bestseller. What I'm saying is um, every novel, right, uh, bestsellers included, every novel includes a worldview and a philosophy. But in this case, when you're looking at bestsellers, most of the time, storytelling precedes style. And I would say that that is what happens here in the case of the boy and the dog. So I definitely recommend it. It's a quick read, uh, but it's a very good story, you know, and if you're a dog person, you're, you're actually gonna love it, okay? I have heard, uh, actually the book says this in the, in the description, that there is a movie in the making, okay? I don't think it's gonna be the next Hachi, you know, but uh, I look forward to it and I want to know what they do with this story. So, uh, those are my two cents on Seishu Hase's The Boy and the Dog. Do you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes? Just let me know. 
Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.